Welcome everybody once again to our journey. So in the last couple of days we have been talking about our principle, the starting point of Exodus 2023, 20, where that people people of God, the Israelites, were faced with the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites on their way to the promised land. And these tribes were occupying the path and the way that they were going. Despite the Lord assured them that his angel would go before them and cut them off from their path. So we also dwelled in into our in our deep discussion about the the fear and the spirit of Hittite, the murmuring spirit, the spirit of Amorites. And the spirit that creeps in from unguarded places, crevices and places on our lives that are thinner in our spiritual shield. And suck out the spiritual essence from our lives. And of course, even impacting our physical being as well. So today we will talk about the Canaanite spirit. The Canaanite spirit is... As I asked the Lord what it is, it's very simple, the Lord said. It's about carnality. The Canaanite spirit it talks about carnality. The zest, the things that we are zealous of, that the things that we go after, especially in this modern context, carnality towards money. Carnality towards receiving, grabbing things. Carnality towards always being self-centered, that you alone should prosper. In this world, people would not do anything. They wouldn't stop at anything to get money. I've seen some of my friends in their WhatsApp statuses, they have mentioned money is everything. Carnality. So how could the Spirit of the Lord the word of the Lord, work in our lives, where that we have idolized carnal things in our lives. So this is a certain spirit and this is one of the most strongest spirits that work in people. Lack of money and another uh, a t-shirt slogan of a friend of mine said, uh, having money is no problem. And not having money is the problem. So having money, consider as no problem at all. But that's the root of all evil. So carnality springs forth, according to the Bible, in different contexts. And even to that extent, the Lord says, let's read Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Especially when the Lord also mentioned, just like in Exodus, Exodus 23, 20, the Lord says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that of uh, that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. That's the promised land and honey. To the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, all the tribes that we discussed in uh, chapter 23, 20 onwards and 23. So here the law talks about the Canaanites as, as a primary confrontation. Lord is very conscious about the carnal attachments that we have, that we tend to idolize in our lives. We discussed about it in length uh, in, the, in tackling or battling the spirit of parasite or parasite spirit. So carnal spirit always talks about money, talks about the possession, talks about uh, gains, physical gains mostly, and uh, physical gains are the money. It could be, could be even 
uh, the, the sexual attachments could be or anything that which has to do with carnality. And automatically, without our knowledge, this carnal, or canon, carnal spirit morphs into or develops into a parasite spirit, creating idols in our lives, especially money, the greed for money. So we see this even in our modern church context as well. The Lord revealed to me, looking at how the churches operate, Looking at how the men and women of God operate in, our, in the society right now. The Holy Spirit revealed to me a certain truth about carnal spirit. Let's read um, 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 20 onwards. But Gehazi the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Look, my master has spared Naaman this Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stowed them away in the house. Then he let the men go and they departed. Now. He went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. So as we read in 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 20 onwards, we see Gehazi's greed. Gehazi's greed. Now Gehazi be seen going after Naaman. After Naaman has been healed of leprosy and goes after Naaman and asks for two talents. In other words, demanding money for the healing that came free from the Lord. It's a gist of the story. And verse 26, Elisha rebukes Gehazi saying, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Elisha perceived the carnal attitude or perception of Gehazi. Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? So Elisha rebukes Gehazi for asking money for the healing that Naaman received out of his leprosy. And that rebuke is so strong, Elisha imputes, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as me. So this is the repercussion of the Canaanite spirit. The Canaanite spirit, also like the other Hittites, the parasites, the Amorite spirit can cripple you of the extreme greed that you have and develop into idols in your lives, in our lives, if you are not conscious of it. So, how can we identify Canaanite spirit? It's very subtle as well, it's very attractive. Canaanite spirit is very attractive. Why? What wouldn't people do for money? If there's a one million dollar Lottery that you want, 
or somebody gives you one million dollars, what wouldn't you do to secure it and to cling on to it? And sometimes you might go crazy. What can I do with one million dollars? Suddenly, the carnal appetite is roused in you. The carnal spirit is enkindled in you. And especially, doing the work of our God, healing in the name of our Lord Jesus, and demanding money for that. In Proverbs it says, a leech has two sisters, give and give. That's the care and spirit, especially the men and women of God, demanding money for prayer, demanding money. Now I have healed you. Sow a seed for that healing to be established. That's the care and spirit. And we, without our knowledge, we fall prey into that as well. It's a very dangerous place to be. Having this discussion with you and your spiritual and physical eyes are open to this kind of a spirit. Having this message inculcated in your hearts, in your spirit, still fall in prayer to that consciously is a sin and it's a very dangerous sin. So you have to be very mindful and careful with that. So how do we overcome the Canaan spirit. How do we overcome the Canaan spirit? Is to acknowledge our Lord is capable. He is supreme, He is superior over everything. In order to help us to overcome that Canaan spirit. Any spirit is subject, submissive to the word of the Lord. When Lord Jesus went to cast away the legion, the legion said, I pray in the name of God, cast us not out. So even the, the evil spirit, the legion also prayed in the name of our Lord God, not in the name of Satan. They are also subject to the voice of our Lord. So in one way that we can overcome the Canaanite spirit or the carnal spirit is to acknowledge who our Lord is, to understand that our Lord is supreme and powerful, far above any principality and power. Let's read Exodus chapter 3 verse, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. When Moses asked the Lord, Indeed when I come to the children of Israel, chapter 10, verse 13, and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, as they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And the Lord says in verse 14, I am who I am. This is a very powerful word which the Lord revealed to me through scripture. Whenever a Canaanite spirit enters our body, in our thought, to our thought stream, we need to subdue it with the power of the Lord. I am who I am. That is, the Lord is supreme. And that is to understand and to acknowledge and emphasize in, to our spirit, to our soul, to our mind and to our flesh and brain, that our Lord is who He is and He is able to help us overcome this carnal spirit. I can take multiple examples of how we become easy prey to Canaanite spirits. You and I know how vulnerable we are. So when every time that we are in a vulnerable spot, just acknowledge the supremacy of our Lord. He is 
who He is, and He is able to deliver us. So, my brothers and sisters, let's pray, and let us pray in the name of Jesus to make us conscious, vigilant, and sober in spirit, as much as that we identify the parasites. Also, to understand the subtleties and the attractions, the propensities of Canaanite spirit. So not to give in to the carnal inclinations, the carnal magnetisms in, in the world. Be it from people, be it from events, be it from uh, material things, be it from emotions. Lord, help us to acknowledge your supremacy in our lives and to say that any spirit is subject to your authority because you are who you say you are. And with that understanding, Father, in the name of Jesus, let us all have this the spirit of clarity and the spirit of the Holy Spirit indwelling in us to teach us, to make us identify and, and uh, be conscious of this spirit and to overcome them. Amen.